At the time, Alva was single. His parents died before he was an adult, and Alva lives with his sister. After his sister got married, he lived alone. Alva had no source of income and could only survive by scavenging waste. All the girls in the village were married at that time, so Alva was single. But Alva was optimistic and content with his life at the time. Although he was lonely at the time, he was used to it. Alva's sister often came back to see Alva and cleaned him, or brought him a bunch of food, just like his mother. Alva's sister also got a good reward in the end, because after Alva became rich, the first thing that came to her mind was his sister. Why did Alva become rich? What exactly happened? Alva's nephew was getting married, so Alva deliberately changed into clean clothes and bought a plump geese and a jar of wine to congratulate him. In those years, Alva knew that his sister's family treated him well, so he went not only to his nephew's wedding, but also to thank them for their care. His sister's house was on the other side of the mountain, so he needed to climb over the mountain and walk a few hundred meters. Although he hadn't heard of wild beasts on the mountain in those years, Alva brought a small shovel for safety. After arriving at his sister's house, he saw many guests. Alva was warmly received by his sister-in-law, but his sister didn't want him to waste money. Alva looked at his sister with relief. Although he spent money, he was very happy. In the evening, the guests who came to congratulate gradually left, and his sister and brother-in-law could rest. Alva slept after a few drinks with the two of them. Alva was going home the next day, and his sister had prepared a pile of food for him and filled his backpack. Alva said goodbye to them, and then carried those things up the mountain. The sky was grey then and it looked like it was going to snow. Alva looked up at the sky and quickened her pace, hoping to get home before dark. As soon as Alva went up the mountain, it snowed heavily. The snow was getting heavier and heavier, covering all the previous roads. Looking at the white surroundings, Alva was lost for a while. Alva walked around and couldn't find a way down the mountain, so he was a little flustered. To avoid repeating the path, Alva took off his collar and hung it on a branch before continuing to find his way down the mountain. But when he saw the collar hanging from the branch again, he realized that he was lost and had been wandering in the same place. Alva was confused that if he didn't find a place to hide from the snowstorm, he might freeze to death in the mountains that night. But he didn't know where to hide. In such bad weather, the beasts would hide in the cave and dare not come out. Alva didn't dare to look for a cave, for fear that if he accidentally broke into the cave of a wolf or a black bear, he would surely die. Alva searched for a long time, but couldn't find a place to hide, but more and more snowflakes appeared on him. In desperation, Alva came to take shelter under a big tree for a while. Although it couldn't cover him completely, it was at least better than staying in the open snow. Not long after sitting down, Alva suddenly heard a strange cry. At first he didn't care and thought he had heard it wrong. But as the sound got closer, Alva immediately looked up to see that it turned out to be a small fox. If it hadn't been looking at Alva, Alva probably wouldn't have noticed it. It was a small snow-white fox, and its cry sounded a little sad. Alva wasn't scared when he saw the white fox, just wondered why it wasn't in the cave and wondered what it wanted. The white fox sniffed in his direction. It turned out that it ran out of the cave because it smelled the aroma of meat. Seeing the white fox nose twitching and staring at his basket, Alva understood its intention. Alva thought it was pitiful, so he took a piece of roast pork from the basket and threw it to it. The white fox stepped forward vigilantly, 
picked up the piece of meat and immediately ran back to the bushes beside the big tree. It was only then that Alva discovered that the white fox burrow was next to the tree. He ripped through the bushes to discover that the white fox was a female fox and had given birth soon after. The white fox cub in the cave was sleeping soundly. Looking at the lonely fox mother and son, Alva felt very distressed, so he opened the basket and took out a piece of pig lung, which was enough for them to have a few meals. And the piece of meat just now was huge. Alva took out the pig's lung and threw it to the white fox, and then went back to the big tree. After a while the white fox came to Alva and stared straight at him. At that time, Alva felt a little strange. Was this white fox not full? But they ate both pieces of meat. Alva looked at the white fox in disbelief and decided to visit its burrow. He opened the bushes and saw that only a small piece of the meat was eaten, but the pig's lung was not eaten. Alva felt helpless and funny after reading it. He pointed to the white fox and said that it was too greedy and even asked him for it before it had finished eating. The white fox didn't understand what Alva was saying. It boldly approached Alva and grabbed the corner of his trousers. Alva looked at the fox, feeling helpless. Then Alva took a chicken leg from the basket and handed it to the white fox. Strangely, the white fox didn't step forward to take the chicken leg, but kept pulling at the corner of his trousers. Alva was puzzled, and after putting away the chicken legs, he stood up and looked at the white fox. The white fox circled around him happily after seeing him get up, and then ran to the back of the big tree. The white fox saw that Alva hadn't followed, so he immediately ran in front of him again. Alva finally knew what it wanted by then, so he picked up the backpack and followed it. The white fox took him to a cave. It turned out that there was a big cave behind the big tree, and there was firewood in it. It seemed that it was not an animal's cave. Alva was thrilled to see the cave because he didn't have to worry about freezing anymore. Alva patted the white fox on the head excitedly, happily saying that it was trying to save him and thanked it, otherwise he would die that night. Alva took out the chicken leg and handed it to the white fox. And the white fox took the chicken leg and jumped around Alva, rubbing its head against Alva. Alva lit the fire and hung the coat and had to dry. Fortunately, the new cotton padded coat his sister made for him was still dry, so he put on a new cotton padded coat and then took out the cooked food his sister made for him and ate it around the firewood. Alva felt less cold after eating, and he checked the food in the basket. Fortunately, his sister prepared a lot of food for him, and even if he was trapped in the cave for a week, he would not die. Alva was going to sleep against the wall, but the wall was very uneven. Alva turned to see what it was. It turned out that there seemed to be a large pot in the earth wall. Alva wanted to dig it out to cook food, so he took out a shovel and carefully dug out the big pot. The jar was pretty and had a nice pattern. Alva turned the big pot over and prepared to pour out all the dirt inside, but what he didn't expect was that a bunch of good things fell out of the big jar, including gold and some jewelry, which didn't look like modern things but antiques. Alva looked at White Fox with joy, and said excitedly that it could bring people luck, because it not only saved him, but also allowed him to find many treasures. The White Fox seemed to understand what Alva said, rubbed Alva and left. After the snow stopped overnight, Alva was ready to head down the mountain. After he gave all the meat in the basket to the White Fox, he went down the mountain, after returning home, Alva did not leave those things privately, but handed them all over to the relevant local authorities. So the relevant departments immediately dispatched archaeologists to investigate the cave. To thank Alva, they specially awarded him a bonus. He gave half of the bonus to his sister and used the rest to buy a chicken farm and help his sister buy a house in the county town. Alva's act of kindness not only changed his fate, 
but allowed him to repay his sister. The white fox also became Alva's friend, and would visit him from time to time, so Alva lived happily in his later years. We cannot avoid suffering in life, and there is nothing we can do in the face of natural disasters, but as long as we persevere with hope, we can be happy. At all times, we must believe that as long as we remain kind, others will be willing to show kindness to us and do their best to protect us. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.